Good morning, this is Gavin Keys Rigging. I'm going to show uh, the simplest uh, double braid eye splice that I have learned. And uh, this was taught to me by Gary Shotwell from Keys Rigging. And uh, so we're going to take a half inch main sheet today and put an eye splice in it for the uh, for his fiddle block. Um, so we're going to take the coil here. We're going to uh, count off roughly 10 or 12 feet of line. Um, eventually we're going to end up having to milk this line, uh, which means pull on it pretty hard and uh, we don't want the core and the cover to migrate. So what I'm going to do is uh, tie a bowline in this line. And so we've got something to pull against that will keep the core and the cover in the same position when we do. And so we've got about eight feet or so of line here. Um, first step is uh, I like to use a, a Samson fid and uh, for double braid. That seems to work the best for me. Um, one fid length is what we're going to measure off here for the berry. Uh, and we're going to mark that. And I started this video earlier, so I already have a mark there. And uh, okay, so now we're going to um, determine the eye size. I'm going to put a decent size eye in this. Um, and you always have to expect that some of this material is actually going to bury a little bit further uh, than what you mark out. So I tend to make the eye slightly bigger than what I want it to end up as. Um, so directly across from the mark that we've already made, we're just going to keep our thumb there and choose a pick meaning three strands that are, are together here and we're going to start working that apart to get access to the core and you can just gently work them back and forth and it will open up and start to see the core there and you can get it to herniate out making sure that you're pulling between the picks so you're not dragging one of them with you when you pull the core out and then we're going to remove the core and just go ahead and pull that all the way out so that we've got two independent pieces of line now we're going to do what's called a balance of the line we're going to pull the core all the way out up against the stopper knot, the bowline that I tied earlier, and then we're going to milk that back down so that the tension of the cover is even over that core material. Sometimes it comes off the machine when it's manufactured a little tighter than what you want, and you can see it generally ends up slightly different in length. So we're going to go ahead and mark the exit on the core and then using our FID there are two dashes marking the short FID and the long FID and then the full FID and so we're going to use the short FID length make one mark and then we're going to use the short and a full fit length and that's where the berry is going to exit okay so now Nice tight wrap of tape around the core, insert it into the fid. And if you were putting a shackle or a block that does not have a removable becket, this would be the time to put that on there. And you can slide it over the cover or the core, it doesn't matter. Now we're going to enter the FID 
And I like to follow the picks down so that you end up in the same side so there's not a twist in the eye splice. And we're going to enter the fid in between the picks. And work this down into the line approximately one short fid length. Now we've got the core passing through the cover. There's a little bit of excess tape on this cover, so I'm going to remove that. You always want to use just enough tape to get the job done. And I like to kind of pinch and fold over the core to fit it into the fid. And it just needs to go in there just a little bit. And then the tape will do the rest and get a nice tight wrap of tape over the fid onto the cover. Just enough to hold it in place. The core exits the cover, and this here is where we're going to do our cover into the core. You can just pull this core right out until you see your second mark. it there and that's our berry. Okay and now we've got our crossover. You want to pull that good and tight. It's very important to pull these good and tight to get that crossover nice and secure. And then we can do our taper on our cover. You can either mark these out or you can start approximately one distance the thickness of your thumb or so and you're going to pull two full picks side by side then work down about three, pull two full picks, down about three or four again, and the idea is that you just want a nice even taper here, so you're just gradually removing portions of the line. This taper increases the strength of the splice by not deforming. It also makes it easier to finish the splice, but this keeps it from deforming abruptly, which weakens the line significantly. So you want a nice, easy taper. Okay. Set that crossover again. And we're just going to milk this down. And then we can set the core. And once you see where that's going to end up, you can just pull that out. 
cut it at that point. Spray this out. You're going to taper this as well. always want to pinch the crossover after you've pulled it tight. You don't want that to move. Sometimes you end up with a little pick here where you pulled that out and you can just gradually work either side just a little bit to get that to go back down so that your line looks good. And this will help actually as you're uh, milking this down. Okay, I've got to reposition the camera and nice and tight. This is what we're going to have to bury. So you want that as tight over that cover as possible. And pinching the crossover, you're going to start at, at the knot and you're going to milk this line. And I like to pull tight, pinching the crossover, pull tight against the portion of the line that's being buried try to get it as tight as possible as it enters the line. If everything went together well, you'll get it just like that in the first pull. But we're going to have a couple more here to really get it set. And again, pull on the eye so that the core and the cover being buried back inside the cover is nice and tight. Milk that right over top of it, pulling gently. And there we go, double braid ice splice. I'm going to milk it one more time. And then you can see the eye closed up too much, but that's because we have just a little bit more work to do here. We're going to set this splice now. Using a large fid through the eye, we're going to pull and you can actually feel everything just settle right down in the way you want it. And there you go, double braid eye splice. You can kind of work the line a little bit to get that splice to settle a bit. And then it's always a good idea to whip the end, go ahead and do a nice uh, cross whip or a lock whip uh, right here at the mouth of the splice. That'll ensure that it does not come open. It, 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 would, it would not uh, fail if you were not to do the splice or the, uh, the um, whip. And that's it. I splice by Gavin Smith here at Keys Rigging. Have a good day.